et bienvenue, hello and welcome, ciao a tutti, buenos dias a todos, dobri den, huve, peve, calimera, vitaice, and herzlich willkommen, dear students, dear teachers, and to our, a warm welcome to our dedicated guests that we are going to meet this afternoon. Wow, I never saw a hemicycle with 1,200 students. It's an amazing view and a lot of smiling faces. Very, a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm very glad to see you here. So first of all, I would like to thank our Philharmonic Orchestra of the city of Strasbourg. Thank you very much for opening this event. Today we celebrate Europe, nous fêtons l'Europe, so you opened this event with an excerpt of the Ode to Joy, the anthem of the European Union, so thank you very much for that. And first of all, I would like to thank also the European Parliament for making this wonderful hemicycle available and to helping us with the organization of this great event this morning. So thank you very much also to the Collectivité Européenne d'Alsace, who is the organizer of this event, of this great week that you have spent here in Strasbourg together, a great European week. And I would also thank the co-financing partners of the three-year contract, uh, Strasbourg European Capital. So I think you all know the slogan of the European Union, which is united in our diversity. We are 27 member states. We have all different cultures, different point of views, and we all speak different languages. So in the European Union, we speak 24 official languages. And this morning, I am going to switch between English, French, and my mother tongue, German. So I'm going to speak three different languages. Je vais alterner ce matin entre trois différentes langues, donc je vais parler anglais, anglais français et l'allemand, qui est ma langue maternelle, parce que vous le savez tous, dans l'Union européenne, nous sommes unis dans notre diversité. C'est le slogan, le slogan de l'Union européenne, et nous avons des différentes cultures, des différents points de vue, et nous avons des différentes langues, et en alternant entre trois langues, je vous permets d'être encore un peu plus unis ce matin ici dans l'hémicycle. Heute früh spreche ich also drei verschiedene Sprachen. Ich spreche Englisch, Deutsch, meine Muttersprache und auch Französisch. Denn ihr wisst es alle, der Slogan der Europäischen Union ist, wir sind vereint in unserer Vielfalt. Wir haben verschiedene Kulturen, wir haben verschiedene Ansichten, aber wir haben vor allem auch verschiedene Sprachen. 24, das ist die offizielle Zahl der Amtssprachen in der Europäischen Union. Und mit diesen drei Sprachen decke ich einen kleinen Teil unserer vielen Sprachen heute früh ab. For those who are not so fluent in English or in French or in German, we have invited a very special guest who is sitting here in the front row. So I present Frédéric Bellier. He is a, he is a presentation designer and a graphic facilitator. You can see what he does up there on the big screen. So he is there to transform our talks and discussions this morning into delightful drawings. So if you don't understand, watch the drawings, it's very nice, and I am curious to see what he does. Je vais le répéter encore une fois en français. Voici alors Frédéric Bellier. Vous voyez déjà ce qu'il est en train de faire. Il est un facilitateur graphique et un designer de présentation. Donc, il nous aide à la compréhension, comme je ne peux pas parler 24 langues en même temps, en interne qu'en trois. Et donc, lui, il facilite nos discours, il transforme nos discours et nos propos en dessin. Voilà. Bienvenue, Frédéric. <laughs> On va voir ce que tu, tu vas faire pendant cette matinée. Merci d'être venu. Et voilà. Today, we, you all know it, we celebrate 70 years of the European Parliament. We celebrate 70 years of democracy. You are here in the hemicycle. Once, one, in one week, in a month, the 705 members of the European Parliament come together here in this house, in this hemicycle, and they are going to discuss, to debate, and to vote on different topics. And these sessions are held under the presidency of Roberta Mezzola from Malta and her 14 vice presidents. And now I have the great honor and the pleasure to welcome 
two members of the European Parliament. The first one is Madame Fabienne Keller. She was once the mayor of this city. Elle était uh, la maire de la ville de Strasbourg. Aujourd'hui, elle est eurodéputée. Elle représente pour nous la présidence de l'Union européenne. She is representing the presidency of the European Union and she is joining us live on the big screen. She will, we have a connection with her. So just, I just want to say that... Hello. Hello. <laughs> So I just want to say, Madame Keller, you are a member of the European Parliament, of the Parliament's Bureau, and also a quester, so you are in charge, responsible for financial and administration matters. So I say, bienvenue, merci d'être venu, d'être là, et on va écouter votre message de bienvenue. Let's hear your welcome message to the 1,200 students and the teachers and our guests. Merci beaucoup, chère Stéphanie. Uh, I am very happy to welcome all on behalf of uh, Roberta Mezzola, who is the chair of the European Parliament. Maybe you hear an echo, and I will take my earphones because this is a problem with the video. We can sometimes. Hear, yes. <laughs> is it better that way? Is yeah. it clearer that way, maybe? Yes, we have no echo yeah. now. We so hear you I am, better. Yeah, so I am very happy to um, say hello to all of you. And I would like to thank you, uh, students coming in Strasbourg from all the 27 member states. I want to say hello also to the 450 students in the tribunes on the top. Looking at their friends, je voudrais saluer les collégiens alsaciens qui se sont joints à cette rencontre et qui euh, accueillent, je crois, les participants de ce grand événement. Thank you. Vielen Dank zu den Vielen Dank zu den Orchestern von Strasbourg der ganz toll ist, sehr schöne Konzerte in Strasbourg, in Deutschland, überall in Europa. Uh, we love to say that music doesn't need to be translated. Music is the common language in Europe. So thank you to the Orchestra of Strasbourg to be here in the middle of the hemicycle playing for the youth of Europe. Uh, je Je voudrais vous dire ma joie d'être avec vous. Uh, it's a joy for me to be with you because nothing can replace human relations, being together, dreaming, ab dreaming about the future of Europe together. Donc je voudrais vous remercier sincèrement du fond du cœur de prendre le temps de vous rassembler. Je voudrais remercier la collectivité européenne d'Alsace. I would like to thank the European community of Alsace to have organized this uh, big event. It's a very big event uh, for our region to have you all gathering in, in Strasbourg and say that uh, the friends you are going to know uh, today uh, are hopefully going to be friends for life. J'espère que votre, vous aurez de belles rencontres, des liens d'amitié, viel Freundschaft auch, euh, hoffentlich an diesen schönen Tag. Uh, I must say that we are in quite troubled times. So in the European Parliament, we are working on important issues such as climate change, environment, uh, priority for, to fight against deforestation, for example, or, uh, uh, natural diversity. We work also on the question of the war, the war in Ukraine, because Europe is supporting the very courageous people of Ukraine and their president, Vlad Volodymyr Zelensky. Uh, we are also trying to help the Europeans when they are in difficult conditions, such as in the COVID period. So we bought vaccines together as Europeans. Nous aimons beaucoup travailler sur des sujets qui touchent les Européens. C'est pour ça que l'environnement nous concerne, mais aussi des sujets comme la pauvreté. Et peut-être aurez-vous l'occasion d'en parler. 
nous pensons qu'il est important que nous soyons solidaires et que les pays qui sont plus forts ou qui ont une période plus favorable puissent aider ceux qui sont à un moment en difficulté. Mais notre principe même de travail, c'est l'unité, l'idée qu'ensemble, en équipe Europe à 27, on est plus fort. Donc merci de prendre le temps de venir à Strasbourg pour partager la, la vision des fondateurs il y a déjà 70 ans, mais qui a porté beaucoup de fruits, qui nous a permis de définir un espace ensemble et des programmes en faveur de la culture ou de la jeunesse, comme par exemple le programme que vous utiliserez, j'espère, plus tard, qui s'appelle Erasmus, qui permet de faire une partie de ses études ou de son apprentissage ailleurs en Europe. Merci beaucoup de votre présence. Merci beaucoup, Madame Keller. Avant qu'on se quitte et on continue, j'aimerais bien vous poser une petite question. Est-ce que vous pourriez juste nous expliquer pourquoi aujourd'hui c'est encore très important de protéger la démocratie et de se battre pour la démocratie? Why today is it so important to fight for democracy and to protect us? One question before we say goodbye. One question, please. Uh, democracy is important because through history, we, we see uh, that it's the only organization where the fundamental rights of people are protected. Fundamental rights, that means equality. Uh, two people in the same situation should not bear an arbitraire decision. They are in the same objective case, so they should have the same help in their life. Et cette question de, de l'égalité, de la protection de tous, elle est protégée par la démocratie. En démocratie, tout le monde a le droit de s'exprimer. C'est la liberté de l'expression de et notamment la liberté de la presse. Uh, we see in Europe today that in some of our member states, Hungary and Poland specifically, there are restricted rights to ex for expression. And this is a problem because people cannot exchange, share their, their views in a free manner, build their opinion, uh, comparing different opinions. Uh, ich muss sagen, dass ich nicht viele auf Deutsch geredet habe, weil mein Deutsch nicht so gut ist. <laughs> es ist wichtig, uh, alle Menschen uh, Freiheit zu schützen und Demokratie kann das äh, machen. Aber Demokratie können sie heute leben, weil sie zusammen diskutieren werden. Sie werden auch wichtige Leute treffen, wie Frédéric Biri, der Präsident der äh, Europäischen Communauté äh, d'Alsace, aber auch die Oberbürgermeisterin von Strasbourg, äh, Frau Jeanne Barzegian, Uh, you are going to hear also my colleague, Anne Sander, and our uh, Minister for European Affairs in France. All of them are working hard uh, in, uh, uh, in this European construction, in making this democracy work. And may I say that you have three women and one man, so the, the girl in the hemicycle can see maybe a projection for their own future, don't hesitate to get involved in politics as a woman, as a girl. C'était une grande joie pour moi de vous, c'était une grande joie pour moi de vous parler. May I say that uh, I am very impressed that you are able to sing all together. Uh, congratulations, singing is a nice way to be all together in Europe. Thank you so much and vive l'Europe. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Thank you very much Madame Keller. Merci beaucoup. Dankeschön Frau Keller.
And now we continue with a second message that has been sent us from Anne Sander. Anne Sander, she's also a member of the European Parliament. She's also a member of the Parliament's Bureau and she is a quester, so also in charge with administration and financial matters. And now let's see her video message that she has sent us. She's very interested in young EU citizens, so let's hear her message. Dear young people from all over Europe, I cannot be with you today, but I could not miss this chance to send a message of strong support to this great event today. It is a pleasure to address you from the European Parliament in Brussels on the launch of your meeting today in our premises in Strasbourg. As an elected representative of Alsace, I'm particularly proud that you can meet here at the European Parliament's headquarters in Strasbourg to sing together the 70th anniversary of our institution. Here, you can feel the heartbeat of Europe. This event is dedicated to you, an event that brings new opportunities, new connections, new friendships. And even to speak, to listen, and to be heard, to participate, and to engage. And even given an opportunity to you, young people, to express your opinion and share your vision about the Europe you would like to see, the Europe in which you would like to live. You are the ones who can shape the future of Europe. You are the ones who can change our perception of what is possible. You are the spirit of the Europe's next generation. I would like to encourage your participation in the democratic processes at the foundation of our societies, because after all, this is our European way of life. And your contribution to promote it is fundamental. Europe needs your energy, creativity and drive to make Europe the place where the best minds work together to find solutions to society's biggest problems. You can count on the support of the European Parliament. We used to say, where there is a will, there is a way. And you can count on the EU to work alongside you as you create that way together. So welcome once again, and I wish you a very fruitful full event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Madame la députée Sander, Anne Sander. We are here in the hemicycle of the European Parliament, the home of the members of the European Parliament, our common house of democracy, the house of the democracy of the 27 member states. But you all know there are a lot of more, a lot more hemicycles all over the world. The national parliaments, the national hemicycles, as l'Assemblée nationale in France or the German Bundestag. And there are a lot more hemicycles, the regional ones. Here in Strasbourg, for example, is sieging the Collectivité Européenne d'Alsace, a smaller government for this region. And the president of the Collectivité Européenne d'Alsace is Frédéric Bierry. Um, it's thanks to him that this week here could happen, this event. So I invite you, kindly invite you to come here and to open the event for us here live in the hemicycle, please, and we hear your welcoming message. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, everybody. <rire> ah bon ah. ah, voilà <rire> Madame la maire de Strasbourg, chère euh, Jeanne, euh, Madame la conseillère régionale, euh, chers collègues élus de la collectivité européenne d'Alsace, euh, Mesdames, Messieurs, chers amis. Alors je vais d'abord m'adresser, ça ne se fait pas du tout ce que je dis là, ce n'est pas du tout politiquement correct, mais je vais d'abord m'adresser aux collégiens alsaciens qui sont là, j'ai cru comprendre, ils sont en haut et en partie dans les Alors, je voulais d'abord m'adresser à vous, pour vous et je vais vous expliquer pourquoi. Parce que je suis très mauvais en langue. Très, très mauvais en langue. Alors, comme j'ai fait quelques erreurs dans le passé, j'aimerais que vous ne fassiez pas les mêmes que moi. Alors, vous allez voir, je vais essayer de, me, de, de, de lire mon discours en anglais. Hein, je vais faire des efforts. Mais vous, je vous invite, vous avez cette chance-là de, de pouvoir échanger avec des jeunes de toutes les nationalités. N'ayez pas de complexe, échangez avec eux, apprenez. Dans ces moments-là, euh, vous allez pratiquement autant apprendre qu'une année de cours. Je ne devrais pas dire ça non plus devant des professeurs qui sont présents. Euh, mais ce moment d'échange, c'est un moment fabuleux, un moment euh, privilégié. Alors profitez-en, euh, parce que ça va être un, un souvenir merveilleux pour vous euh, quand vous serez euh, euh, adulte euh, dans quelques années. Et maintenant j'y vais. Ne riez pas trop, hein. Ah ben non, mais vous commencez déjà à rire. It's magic. It's very impressing to see you, to hear you singing together. Congratulations. I have goosebumps when I hear you. I am very proud. Uh, to, be front, to be in front of you today to the European Parliament, the House of Democracy, symbol of peace and happiness. Thanks to more than 70 years of peace, we are here today in this beautiful Imai cycle. But let's not forget about war, about Ukraine, about people that are worrying about their future. Young people like you, maybe they think they have no future anymore. And on the contrary, you are here today. You are free, happy, happy to be here, and free to travel to Strasbourg in Alsace. Let's hope Ukraine will join the European family one day. You are here to represent all European member states 27 nationalities. You are here for one week, welcomed by Alsacian High School. It's the Collectivity European d'Alsace that I am the president of, which organized this week and this great event today. You are here because my colleagues and I, we are convinced that you are the future of Europe. We trust in you and we think you can make Europe a great place to live in. You can make Europe stronger, better, more ecological. You can keep peace on our continent and one day welcome Ukraine in our family. As you may know, next year we will vote for the European election in June 2024. You cannot vote to this election because you are too young, but you may vote in the text ones. Voting is super important important for our future, for your future. So we and your family to go out and vote. Today, we are in the house of democracy. Under the blue flag, we see 12 stars. And speaking about stars, you will have to change to meet an astronaut this afternoon, Monsieur Morer, uh, who will take you up there and maybe give you some good ideas about what to do in the future. Thank you very much. So, enjoy your afternoon, have fun, and vive l'Europe. Merci beaucoup.
Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président Frédéric Vieri. Alors, heute feiern wir Europa. Today we celebrate Europe. Aujourd'hui, nous fêtons l'Europe. Vor 70 Jahren fand hier in Straßburg die erste Sitzung der gemeinsamen Versammlung der Europäischen Gemeinschaft für Kohle und Stahl statt. Jener Montanunion, aus der die heutige Europäische Union hervorging. Und die Versammlung vor 70 Jahren war der Ausgangspunkt für das heutige EU-Parlament. 17 years ago, the first meeting of the Joint Assembly of the European Coal and Steel Community, the community that gave rise to the today's European Union, was held here in Strasbourg, and the Assembly 70 years ago was the starting point for the today's European Parliament. Il y a 70 ans, se tenait ici à Strasbourg la première session de l'Assemblée commune de la Communauté européenne du charbon et de l'acier, la communauté qui a donné naissance à l'Union européenne actuelle, et l'Assemblée d'il y a 77 ans a été le point de départ de l'actuel Parlement européen. So now, let's travel back in time. On va voyager dans le temps. Wir reisen jetzt in der Zeit zurück et on va découvrir les moments clés, les moments historiques de l'Union Européenne des 70 ans. We are going to discover the most important historical moments of the European Union in the last and the past 70 years. On va découvrir les moments historiques. Wir entdecken die großen geschichtlichen Ereignisse, Schlüsseldaten aus der Geschichte der Europäischen Union, 70 Jahre. We, see, we would like to see now the video together. L'Europe ne se fera pas d'un coup. Elle se fera par des réalisations concrètes, créant d'abord une solidarité de fait. avait fait en m'appelant à la présidence du Parlement européen. We thank you that by your ceaseless efforts and those of the millions of people you represent, you liberated from prison. So many of us. Ce peuple européen uni n'acceptera pas la domination d'une nation ou d'une culture sur d'autres, mais soutiendront les droits égaux pour tout enrichir les autres de leur différence. Der Aufbau des Vereinten Europas ist vor allem anderen ein Werk des Friedens. Und dies müssen wir gemeinsam schaffen. C'est la guerre.
Європейський Союз буде точно міцніше. Без вас Україна буде самотньою. Wow, what a history! This video always makes me goosebumps. Je des frissons quand je regarde cette vidéo. Quelle histoire! Von diesem Video bekommt man jedes Mal ein bisschen Gänsehaut. Was für eine Geschichte! Once in my life, I've met a man here working for the European Parliament, and he told me democracy is like riding a bike. If you don't pedal, the bike will fall over. So democracy must be practiced, must be lived, must be in action. And we do this by voting. And the members of the European Parliament here, they vote. And when they vote, they use the little button, buttons that you see in front of your desks. And I would like now that you try those buttons with a little quiz. We prepared a little quiz for you, one question. And now you have to say us if the sentence is correct or false. Is uh, cette phrase là, est-ce qu'elle est correct ou est-ce qu'elle est fausse? Est dieser Satz richtig oder falsch? The European Union won the Nobel Peace Prize, if it's true. You have to select the green button, and if it's a false, the red button. Now it's up to you to vote. Has the EU won the Nobel Peace Prize? You discuss. Is it true or false? <laughs> oh, you are... <laughs> it discusses a lot. Is it true? Is it false? Make your decision. Faites votre choix. Einmal wählen. Okay, now we close the vote. The vote is closed. So we have 532 people, students here, who said this is correct. 14 said no, this is false. Seven said I don't know, it's abstention, and 553 participants, so students that voted and teachers and our guests. And now I can say you it is correct. When you've paid attention to our video, you saw Martin Schulz, the former president of the European Parliament, who held it in his hands. The European Union won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2012. So I can just say congratulations. You already know a lot about the European Union. And now I would like to welcome our next guest. She is sitting there and um, she also wants to talk to you because she, you are here in her city, in the city of Strasbourg. She is the mayor of the city of, of Strasbourg and she is from the Green Party. So, bonjour, Madame Jeanne Barseguian. Je vous invite aussi à monter sur scène. Et Monsieur Biary, vous pouvez aussi rejoindre Madame Barsiguian sur scène parce qu'on va échanger avec vous tout à l'heure et avec Monsieur Maurer, bien sûr. Pas encore, <rire> non, non. Et voilà, c'est à vous. <rire> Bonjour à, à tous et à toutes et très très heureuse de pouvoir me joindre à vous pour ce très beau moment et de vous accueillir à Strasbourg. Herzlich willkommen in Strasbourg, Sitz vom Europäischen Parlament. Welcome to Strasbourg, seat of the European Parliament. Let me share with you all the pleasure I have of being with you today. As you know, it is a very special year for us here in Strasbourg, together with the European Parliament. We are celebrating the 70th anniversary of the European Parliament being in Strasbourg. And this shows that our city is both at the root of the European project, but also its future. It is the beating heart of democracy and a place of great historical symbolism as it embodies the French-German reconciliation. 
that at a time when our continent is yet again facing a war. Please let me express again all my strongest solidarity to, to the U Ukrainian people. In this context, we can only think of young people and more than that, make European citizenship a priority for action to enable each and every one of them to play a role and to be active in making their voice heard. How best to make your voice heard than by voting? It leads us to the forthcoming European election in 2024 and the importance of making young people and first-time voters, maybe you very soon in a few years, aware of the importance of voting. Choosing the members of the European Parliament means choosing the kind of Europe we want. And Europe is facing major challenges. Amongst of the, all of them, climate change. And I want to thank the mobilization of young people on this issue. Thank you for all the climate marches and please carry on. We will try our best not to let you down. A last word to say that in Strasbourg, we host every two years, I, the European Youth Event in partnership with the European Parliament. Maybe that will be a great opportunity for you to come back here in Strasbourg. So let me thank you for being part of this project here today and please don't stop. Enjoy your time in this beautiful and promising institution and make the most of your time in Strasbourg. Profitez bien de cette journée. Vive l'Europe et vive la jeunesse européenne. Merci. Merci beaucoup pour ce message de bienvenue. Je vous en prie et je vous prie, s'il vous plaît, de rester là-haut parce qu'on va échanger tout de suite. D'abord, on va encore entendre un message qu'on a eu. To, to, we start now to hear another video message that we have received from Paris. Just before, I would like to tell you that here, as the mayor of Strasbourg said it, Alsace, it's a kind of a very important territory. We are, we are here in the heart of Europe because of its history here, because of its borders with Germany, because of this building here, the European Parliament and the Hemicycle. And Europe is in the heart of the work of the person that we are going to see in a few seconds here on the big screens. Je vous parle de Laurence Boone. Je, I, I'm talking about Laurence Boone. She, elle, elle est une femme politique française qui est très importante car elle est la secrétaire d'État chargée de l'Europe dans le gouvernement français actuel. actuel. Laurence Boone, elle est la secretary of state, state in charge of European affairs and she's joined she has sent us a video message from Paris and we are going to hear that because for her Europe is in the heart of her work so let's hear her message Chers amis je ne pouvais malheureusement pas être avec vous aujourd'hui parce que je suis retenue à Bruxelles pour une réunion avec les autres ministres de l'Europe pour autant je tiens à vous féliciter toutes et tous et en particulier le président Frédéric Bierry qui m'a adressé son invitation pour cette initiative qui est vraiment formidable. Vous êtes plus de 1000 à avoir répondu présent, représentant 26 délégations d'établissements secondaires ou artistiques de toute l'Europe, aujourd'hui réunies en Alsace. Fait-on l'Europe C'est vraiment un beau projet, puis c'est une chance pour nous tous. Nous célébrons cette année le 70e anniversaire du Parlement européen et vous avez la chance de tous vous retrouver aujourd'hui dans ce bel hémicycle de Strasbourg. Ce Parlement, c'est vraiment le cœur vivant de la démocratie européenne, où se retrouvent l'ensemble des députés européens. Ils viennent de 27 pays différents, ils appartiennent à des familles politiques différentes, mais de leurs travaux, de leur capacité à bâtir des compromis ensemble, dépend aussi de notre avenir. Et si l'Europe est un vieux continent, selon l'expression consacrée, l'Union européenne, elle, c'est une idée incroyablement moderne. Et donc ce Parlement, c'est aussi celui qui a eu l'honneur d'avoir pour première présidente Simone Veil. Son message, sa voix, nous rappelle que rien n'est jamais acquis. Que la paix est une construction fragile, comme la guerre en Ukraine à nos frontières nous le rappelle malheureusement. Voilà, je voudrais que ces mots résonnent aussi en chacune et chacun d'entre nous à l'heure où certains rejettent tout projet collectif. 
Et Simone Veil disait « L'Europe, c'est le grand dessin du XXIe siècle ». C'est surtout sur cet aspect que je voudrais insister. En tant que jeunes Européens, vous représentez bien sûr notre futur. Vous êtes né dans une Europe où vous pouvez voyager facilement d'un pays à l'autre. Mais sans l'Union Européenne, votre présence ici, elle n'aurait sans doute pas été aussi facile. Et je souhaite que vous en soyez conscient. Aussi avant vous, des personnes se sont battues pour ces droits. Et nous devons continuer à cultiver ces valeurs et à travailler ensemble pour les préserver. Vous le faites déjà en échangeant tous ensemble au cours de cette semaine et je voudrais vous en féliciter. Vous êtes la génération qui va façonner l'Europe de demain. Vos rêves, vos idées vont déterminer ce que deviendra notre vieux continent, capable aujourd'hui, grâce à nos chercheurs, à nos ingénieurs, d'aller même dans l'espace. Et je veux ici saluer les représentants de l'Agence spatiale européenne. Je vous remercie d'avoir accepté de participer à ce projet. C'est la meilleure preuve que notre démocratie est vivante et que sa jeunesse en est la plus belle promesse. Je vous remercie et bon débat. Merci beaucoup pour ce message, Madame la Ministre Laurence Boone. Thank you very much for this message. Uh, Laurence Boone, she told us that you are the future of Europe, your dreams, your ideas count and you will construct our old continent of Europe with your ideas and your dreams and your wishes. And she is looking forward to see what you will all do for the European Union and for our common future. So now we discussed about democracy and it's time for us for the second point on our today's agenda. Now we are going to space together. As Laurence Boone mentioned in her, in her video message, she told us that the European Space Agency is here. We have it here. We have Matthias Maurer today, who is sitting here. I am going to introduce you before in a few in a few words. Um, first of all, I would like to say you that normally when you think about the European Union, you think about the 27 member states, about languages, about traveling, about policy. You think about Earth topics, but Europe is also present in the sky, in the space. And it's the ESA who is there, the European Space Agency. And Matthias Maura is one of the great and gorgeous astronauts from the ESA, the European Space Agency. And you can join me here, Matthias, if you would like to come, it would be great. And I will tell you, Matthias Maura, <laughs> a little applause. <laughs> Hi, Matthias, we go to stage in a few minutes. First of all, I would like to introduce you in a few words. Um, so you, on November 11th, 2021, you flew to the ISS, to the International Space Station. You, was, you, you were the 600th person in space and you spent 175 days on the ISS. You did 2,832 orbits and you spent six hours and 55 minutes out of space, outside a spacecraft, which is called an extra vehicular activity or short EVA. What a journey. So welcome here. Now you are here in the hemicycle. Have you ever been here and how do you feel towards all those students here? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. It's the very first time that I'm here. It's for me a great, great honor to be amongst so many young students fascinated by Europe. Um, you say that I also put on my blue jacket. Blue is the color of Europe, but it's also the color of us astronauts. And yes, I'm, I'm happy to share some of my passion this afternoon with you. So, Matthias, I invite you to go to stage and to join Madame La Maire, the mayor of Strasbourg, and President Frédéric Guéry. And perhaps, Matthias, you could comment a little bit on the video that we see, it's the video about your cosmic kiss, your mission, and uh, it would be great if you could tell us a little bit what we see actually on the big screen. Yes, so here you see uh, some scenes from my experiments when I was in space. So I launched in November 21 and I spent half a year in space. And the reason why we fly to space is to do science experiments, because in space, flying at 400 kilometers altitude, we can do stuff in zero gravity that we cannot do here on the ground. And um, so we do a lot of experiments to learn. And uh, once we learn, 
we bring this information back down to the ground to create better engines, to learn about medicine, um, to make advances also in all different aspects. Also, for example, climate change. I had to do some concrete mixtures up there. And uh, the reason was because in space we can look into this material, the old material that is also all around us here, and can learn so much how to improve it. And then we can um, create progress and innovation down here on the ground. On the International Space Station, we are usually always seven astronauts. In my case, we had three Americans, three Russians, and me as the representative of Europe. And Europe is a partner of this international cooperation since the year 2000. We have already had um, astronauts up there on the International Space Station. So uh, it's a huge success to work there, to like, have this joint adventure. And sometimes you even meet friends in space. Here you see Samantha Cristoforetti from Italy. She came up to space when my time was up. And so I handed over to her and she continued. And later on, she became even the commander of the space station, the very first female European commander of the International Space Station. An incredible achievement. And after six months in space, that's the way how you return down to the ground. You splash down in the water and um, you're happy. And then your friends and family are waiting for you, waving. And uh, since then, I've been talking about my adventures in space. And that's it. So thank you very much, Matthias, for this explanation, for commenting on this great video. Dear students, now it's up to you. You can ask your questions. And Madame la Maire, Jeanne Barthélien, vous aussi. Vous êtes invité à poser des questions. Et Monsieur Biary, vous aussi, bien sûr. We are going to debate together now. First of all, I have one question to you. Who of you dreams to go to space, to be an astronaut? Good, boys, OK. So, oh, a lot. A lot of young students. There we have one student, 602. <laughs> you are waving. Do you have a question for Matthias? Yes, OK, then go for it, please. Please stand up, tell us your name. And um, perhaps you can use your microphone. You see it there? You have a red. Yeah, great. <laughs> My name is Bianca. And what's your question to Matthias? And perhaps what do you dream of? You would like to become an astronaut flying to the ISS, to the moon? Yes. <laughs> yes? And we have a question for Matthias. Ah, a question? Um, une question, une frage. How is in space? Uh, like, um, it's uh, so big and um, wonderful. Yes. Is it scary? <laughs> well, space is like what I've been dreaming about just almost all my life. And once you fly to space, you're light and floating as a butterfly. So it's so, so nice. Your entire body doesn't have any weight anymore. And so you can float, as you've seen in the video clip. And then you can float to our window and you can look down to planet Earth. And you see, actually, you're not on this planet anymore. It is so fascinating and, and it gives you goosebumps. And um, it's, it's a wonderful view. It's so exciting. It's like, maybe you saw in the video when we arrived, it's like I had, I had smiling faces like all over. Um, because it's just like, it's better than you imagine in your best dream. It's so wonderful. And when you fly and look down to planet Earth, and you fly in 90 minutes once round the planet, you feel really this planet, it, it has a lot of energy. And you don't see the people down there, you don't see the animals, but you feel there is a lot of energy even vibrating. And then you also feel like you see that this blue marble in, it's in the background, is everything is black, black, black of space. And you feel like it's fragile, we need to protect it. So um, when you fly over Brazil, for example, the Amazon, you see a lot of smoke rising up. And that's exactly on the line between agriculture and the rainforest. And you, then you know like people are burning down the, the rainforest. And then you feel really, really sad because you know this is the beginning of climate change. So as an astronaut, whenever we look down, we feel we need to protect our planet much, much better. There's only one planet. 
Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Bianca. <laughs> Thank you very much for this great question. So a lot of students here interested in discovering space. We have a lot of hands raised. So we continue here with C385 with a lot of engaged students behind. <laughs> so please tell us your name, where do you come from, and what's your question to Matthias? Hello, I'm Victor Masip, and I'm from Spain. Hola. And my question is, how do you feel when you're out of the space station? Hola, Victor. Muy buena pregunta. Eh? Um, I will. Um, I think Spanish is not the way I can answer. So I shall I answer. You, you can in answer in Spanish and then translate it into English, <laughs> if you would like to. A mix. Bueno, es que salir del, de la nave espacial es muy, muy, muy espectacular. Sabes, es que estás dentro de tu traje espacial. Es como una pequeña nave. Ahí tienes tu oxígeno y tienes como está como in, inflado. Es muy duro trabajar. Y cuando tú abres la puerta y sales fuera, tú piensas que hoy voy a, voy a caer, voy a caer esos 400 kilómetros. Y al inicio tienes un poco de miedo, pero muy rápidamente tu cerebro se adapta y tú dices, bueno, voy a hacer como me han entrenado. Y así eh, haces y eh, haces y... Eh, Bueno, dentro de pocos minutos verás que eh, puedes trabajar, puedes vivir y puedes hacer tu trabajo. Es eh, súper espectacular. Yo me sentía un poco como Alice in Wonderland, ¿sabes? Cuando se caí dentro de la, de la fuente esa, era como en un país maravilloso. Era muy, muy, muy espectacular para mí. So, okay, so a very quick sum up in English. Um, when you open the door and you step out into space, it's, your brain is telling you, I'm falling. And, and you feel like you're scared, you want to hold, you want to grip the handle. And it's true, you're falling, but you're falling all the time. You're falling around the planet Earth, because that is flying in space means falling around the planet. And it takes a little bit to, um, to accept this, that you're not falling down, and that you can actually float outside on the station, you can step by step go to where you need to work, and then you can do all the stuff that you need to do. And in your space suit, you're actually like in a small spacecraft. You have your own oxygen and your radio system that you can talk to the colleagues on the ground. And there are only two persons outside. And whoever you have with you, it's the best friend that you have, because if you're in risk, this person needs to come and save you, and the other way around. So for me, it was a little bit like Alice in Wonderland, falling down uh, the well and, and just waking up or discovering a beautiful, magic world. And when I say, as an astronaut, I have several dreams. The first dream is riding a rocket to space. The second dream was stepping outside of the space station and doing a spacewalk. And the third one will be flying to the moon. And that hopefully is still ahead. <laughs> flying to the moon. Ma ma yeah. <laughs> and I, d I don't know, Matthias, you, yeah, you see Frédéric Bellier, he's drawing you at the moment. So we see a rocket and I think the moon <laughs> and you. So thank you, Frédéric, for your nice drawings, your delightful drawings. You heard, you've heard that Matthias, he spoke English, he speaks English, he spoke Spanish, but you also speak, I think, Russian, Chinese. What do you speak? Yes, so in school I learned um, Latin, French, and I learned English. And then later on when I studied, I added a little bit of Italian and Spanish. And then when I became an astronaut, I had to learn Russian. And at a certain time, we also <laughs> said like, oh, maybe we cooperate with China. So um, I also had to learn a little bit of Chinese. That's yeah. quite impressive. <laughs> <laughs> So whenever, whenever you have the chance to learn a language, just grab the chance. It's such a powerful way to communicate with people. It's, um, yeah, the better, the more. <laughs> Monsieur Biri, je, je vois que vous êtes vraiment d'accord, donc euh, aussi, euh, ouais, <laughs> c'est ça. <laughs> Alors, euh, on va continuer avec les questions ici dans l'hémicycle. On a vraiment beaucoup de questions. We have a lot of questions, so now we go there to... Oh, there we go. 441, please. Stand up. And <laughs> we try to answer all your questions. So, Matthias uh, is... Uh, hello. 
my name is Lana. I came from Croatia. And my question is, uh, what did you eat there? Oh, <laughs> so that's a good question. So, um, well, in space, it's like most of the stuff that we have up there comes up in a can or in a pouch, and it is good for three years. So it's, we don't have fresh salad. We don't have or only when a capsule arrives with uh, fresh food that we get sometimes even ice cream. That's shortly after Christmas we got ice cream. Um, but that's only good for a few days and then it's gone. The rest of the time it's um, food that most of the time is dry and you need to add water and then it's, it gets a kind of a pasty shape and then you cut the bag open and with a spoon you eat. And so it's, you don't fly to space because it's the best food. The food is much better down here on the ground. And uh, I can tell you, after six months in space, I was dreaming of having fresh fruit. So uh, you saw me in the video clip in that plane, coming out of that plane. In that plane, I, I ate two fruit platters, just because I was so, so much looking forward. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Alors, je vois qu'il y a aussi des questions tout là-haut, les collégiens alsaciens. There are also questions up there of the students from here, from Alsace. I think you don't have a microphone up there, but perhaps you could try if you speak loudly. There is a young boy with blonde hair. Perhaps you can try to ask your question. Try it. We try to hear you. <laughs> Tu peux répéter, s'il te plaît Bah, bien sûr, bien sûr, je me sentais européen dans l'espace très, très européen. Et tu vois, c'est... On, on, J'étais seulement euh, le seul européen euh, entre mon équipe. Mais jusqu'avant moi, il y avait Thomas Pesquet, que vous connaissez peut-être mieux ici en France. Et euh, bon, c'était prévu que Thomas et moi, qu'on se rencontre dans l'espace pendant cinq jours... Et puis, moi, je reste six mois. Et puis, Samantha de l'Italie, elle arrive. Et comme ça, on avait une présence de un an et demi, presque sans pause, des Européens dans l'espace. C'était quelque chose d'unique. Et oui. Et moi, je trouve l'Europe, c'est un partenaire très, très, très fort dans l'espace. Et je crois aussi que l'Europe doit s'engager encore plus dans l'espace. Nous, les Européens, on a le meilleur système de navigation qui s'appelle Galileo. C'est aussi financé par l'Union européenne. Et nous, on a le meilleur système des satellites pour observer le, notre planète. Ce système s'appelle Copernicus. Ce sont beaucoup, euh, plusieurs satellites avec la meilleure résolution. Mais nous, on a perdu la première place pour le transport dans l'espace. Tu vois, il y a 15 ans, nous, on était aussi leader dans le secteur transport avec notre fusée euh, Ariane. Maintenant, il y a SpaceX. Et les, les Européens, on ne sait pas encore euh, transporter des êtres humains, notre propre astronaute amené dans l'espace. Et ça, on va proposer cette année-là, en novembre, on va proposer aux politiciens en Europe de, faire, de, de continuer cette capacité. Parce que nous, on aime bien que vous, dans le futur, vous pouvez voler avec une fusée européenne dans une capsule européenne, avec une équipe européenne dans l'espace. C'est notre rêve. A lot of questions. We have a lot of work to do. So I would like to go here in the front row and seat number 40, please. Yes, it's yeah. C'est toi. Uh, yeah, please stand up. Tell us how, what's your name and what's your question and where do you come from? Euh, je m'appelle Celia. Mm -hmm. et, euh, je viens de Strasbourg ici. Et euh, ma question c'était euh, comment vous faites pour aller aux toilettes? <rire> ah oui, oui, oui c'est une très bonne question et très important. Tu sais, euh, quand j'étais euh, en entraînement, on, on nous a entraîné à Houston, en Texas, et là, il y avait un instructeur qui nous a dit, euh, je vous recommande, quand vous allez aux toilettes pour la première fois, il faut se déshabiller complètement. Et moi, je dis, pourquoi est-ce que je dois me déshabiller complètement Et lui, il avait, avec un sourire, il a dit, tu verras. <rire> 
Donc, c'est un peu... Tu vois, on a seulement six pantalons pour les six mois. Et tu ne veux pas avoir des problèmes et perdre un pantalon parce qu'on n'a pas de machine à laver. Et euh, tout, tout flotte dans l'espace. Aussi, les trucs qui doivent tomber dans la toilette peuvent flotter si tu ne fais pas, pas, pas attention. Et donc, euh, tu peux imaginer, pour que ça ne flotte pas, les techniciens ont développé une toilette spéciale. Et cette toilette-là, c'est comme une combinaison entre toilette et une aspiratrice. On dit ça, Staubsauger Aspirateur. Et, euh, mais il faut quand même le pratiquer. Et au début, quand tu ne sais pas, euh, il y a des problèmes de temps en temps. J'ai eu la chance. <rire> et pour, pour le liquide, il y a un autre tuyau, parce qu'on fait la séparation entre le liquide et le solide. Le solide, ça entre dans, dans le lavabo et après, c'est un seau. Quand il est plein, on le met dans une ancienne capsule et cette capsule-là, on laisse rentrer dans l'atmosphère et après, ça brûle. Et quand tu vois une étoile, ce n'est pas toujours une vraie étoile. De temps en temps, c'est aussi une étoile de Mathias. Quoi. <rire> le, liquide, le liquide, on va le recycler, on va le nettoyer et après, ça devient de l'eau et on le boit. On recycle toute l'eau, c'est 90% de recyclage. OK. <rire> bon, là, j'ai hâte de voir le dessin. <rire> Let's see the drawing, so, de Frédéric. Um, we continue. We have, I think we have 500 questions here. Now we are going here on 709. Yeah, the young boy who's, who stands up. Yeah. What's your name? Where do you come from? My name is uh, Zolan Pozgai, and I'm from Hungary. Uh, were you sad because you didn't see your friends and your family? Were you sad, yeah. <laughs> So, very good question. It's, you know, we have good internet up there on the space station. We have, we have satellite connectivity, so we have super fast internet. And uh, whenever I felt I want to talk to my family, I can call by phone. It's not Skype, but it works similar. So I can call like a, on a phone. And um, on the weekend, I had 15, 20 minutes a video conference where I could also see my family and uh, so I could talk to them, and that was really, really good. I had one occasion where it was a little bit um, stressful for my parents. It's, we just started the conversation, and I saw my parents on the screen, and I said, like, yeah, I'm doing fine, and then suddenly we had a fire alarm on the space station. Oh. And so I said to my mom, said, oh, sorry, I need to hang up, we have a fire alarm. <laughs> and I said it like this, you know, like, mm, happens. It, 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 I could see in the eyes of my mom, she was super scared. And, and so I said, like, okay, that was maybe not the correct way to say, like, uh, we have a fire alarm. So I was like, don't worry, sometimes it happens because we have dust up there, dust that floats in the air, and that goes into the smoke detectors. And so most of the time when we have fire alarm, it's a wrong fire alarm. And um, so we know this, it happens occasionally, but uh, okay, it was a little bit of stress for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for this um, explanation. Yeah, a little applause. <laughs> so uh, we have an uh, atmosphere here in the hemicycle. We, we will try to deal with all your questions. Now we are going here to the boy who stands already, it's 132, yeah, it's 37, sorry. I think you are 37. Yeah, you, please stand up. Tell us your name, please, where um, do you come from? <laughs> my name is Harold, and I am from Lithuania. My question is that if in space, you said you were as light as a butterfly, because there was no gravity. How long did it take to get used to gravity when you came back to Earth? Oh, that's a very, very good question. So, um, so first, when I flew to space, I had to get used to zero gravity. So that took me a little bit, like a few days, to become really efficient, because in, when you arrive in space and everything floats, even, I mean, we need to do experiments, and just imagine, like, when I want to touch a button, the button 
pushes me. So it's like, it's difficult to work up there in space. And so you need to get used to zero gravity. And working there, usually either you have one hand and you work with the second hand, or if you need to work with two hands, then you need your feet and, and, and hold, gra grab something with your feet to not move away from working. And here on the ground, you can put something on the table and it doesn't float away. But in space, it's like you always float and the stuff that you put on the ground, it floats away. So in the beginning, we lost a lot of items. It's not lost, but they just were floating away. And so I spent a lot of time like looking for it. And when you land, your body has adapted to zero gravity. And um, zero gravity means like with your eyes, you have one information and in your inner ears, it, it gives you an indication of, even when you close your eyes, you know that you have your head, head upright or when you lay in bed, you have your eyes closed, you know that you're lying in bed. It's because of a sensor that you have in your body. This sensor doesn't work in space anymore. So when you land, in the beginning, you have a lot of issues keeping equilibrium or walking around the corner. And so it took three weeks before the doctors told me, you are allowed to drive a car again. It was um, roughly two weeks before I could run again, like jogging. And it took me at least one day to walk a straight line. And uh, maybe a couple of days to do several activities where I turn my head. You know, it's, uh, so it, it's not one information that I can give you. It's, it's a gradual approach. So after three weeks, I felt like I was back on Earth, back to gravity. Thank you very much. <laughs> May I just kindly ask you to sit down so only the student that is, that is asking the question stands up so we can see who is, so we can better see who is asking the question because you're all standing up now and it's getting a little I bit I like chaotic. your teamwork. <laughs> teamwork, yeah. <laughs> so now we are going up there to the boy behind, 753, yes, you. <laughs> yes, you did Hello. it. <laughs> Um, what, what was the most wonderful thing you have seen in the space like? So that's, that's a very easy answer for me. It's, uh, you know, when I arrived in the space station, I said, like, I want to look through the window. I, I want to see planet Earth. And so when I arrived on the space station, I floated down to Cupola. Cupola is the window, the, the largest window that we have. And then um, I opened the window shutters. And then I saw planet Earth below, and it was so marvelous, so beautiful. I had goosebumps all over my body. And every time I think back of this very first magic moment, I, I, now again, I have goosebumps. It's so beautiful. And I wish every one of you could fly to space and just have this one view. It, it's just like, you cannot, it's just unimaginable. Thank you very much. <laughs> And we continue here with the seat number 57, please. Stand up. Also, we would like to know your name, please. Your um, country, no my name is Gada, and I'm also from Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And my question is, when you sleep, do, do you tie yourself to the bed or just let your body float? <laughs> well, you gave me already two op uh, options, and actually that is what astronauts do in space. Some astronauts feel like they want to be tied to the wall, and others want to float. It is um, my very first night, I was in my sleeping bag, and when I switched off the light, I was immediately getting scared, because like, as soon as the light went off, I had in my head the feeling I am falling down a deep, a deep, deep tunnel, a black tunnel. It, I mean, falling down the black tunnel isn't relaxing, and so you don't want to sleep. So I switched on the light again immediately, and I had to do this twice or three times before I, I was say like, okay, now I'm tired enough, now I can sleep. And from the second day on, my brain was already adapted, and uh, I said like, no, actually, I don't want to be tied to the wall. I want to free float because this is makes sleeping so much more comfortable, and so it's softer as even in a in a water bed, I should say. So it's like, it's very, very comfortable. My sleeping bag was attached only with a small piece of rubber to not float away. But I slept free floating in a free floating sleeping bag. <laughs> Thank you. 
Et on continue dans la première rangée, in the first row, seat number 20, 21, please. Yes, you. Uh, yeah, you. Uh, please stand up. Tell us your name, yes. Euh, bonjour, je m'appelle Louisa et ma question c'était est-ce euh, que vous êtes, euh, vous êtes déjà approché d'une étoile Ah, c'est une belle question. Tu sais, voler dans l'espace, euh, nous, on voit les étoiles, mais on est comme vraiment, vraiment, vraiment loin des étoiles. Moi, je vole dans l'espace, mais c'est seulement 400 km. Donc, la distance entre ici et Paris, c'est peut-être 400, c'est même plus que 400 km. Donc, même si je dis j'étais dans l'espace, j'étais tellement proche de notre planète euh, que je n'étais pas plus proche d'une autre étoile. Mais il y a une différence. Quand toi, tu regardes les étoiles, tu vois que la lumière, ça, ça fait, ça fait une, comme une pulsation, quelque chose. Tu vois, c est, c est, ça, ça, ça prie ou clignote ou comment je... Ça clignote. ça clignote, ça clignote. Et nous, dans l'espace, on ne voit pas que ça clignote. Et la raison, c'est parce que l'atmosphère a une influence. Et que ça clignote, c'est l'influence de l'atmosphère. Nous, on est dehors de l'atmosphère. Et comme ça, tous les points, toutes les étoiles sont stables. Mais sinon, il n'y a pas, pas de grande, grande différence. We continue up there on seat 553. Um, have you ever been scared to fly to space or have you been confident? Tell yes. us is your name, where do you come from? Sorry. I was going to say the tongue. My name is Matilda and I'm from Sweden. Excellent, wonderful Thank question. You. So, um, I mean, when you climb into a rocket, and the rocket will accelerate within less than nine minutes from zero to 28,000 kilometers per hour. I believe uh, everyone who climbs in there the first time is a little bit scared, and I was also scared. And especially for the moment when they start the engine and you feel a push in your back and the acceleration and you think like, oh, wow, and, but then it's too late. You need to stay in there. It's, uh, you cannot climb out again. So that is the moment when, uh, when I was a bit scared. But again, you, we get a good training, and we were in a centrifuge. And after a few seconds, that felt almost similar like in the training. I said, like, OK, I trust the system, and I arrive in space. Also, when I did the spacewalk, as I described earlier, also when you open the door and you feel that there's nothing between planet Earth and your feet, you, your brain also tells you you're falling. And that's also a moment when you're a little bit scared. Monsieur. <laughs> Monsieur Bieri, quand vous entendez ça, ça vous inspire aussi vous, vous avez rêvé de devenir un astronaute, juste pour savoir <rire> Alors, pas du tout, mais vraiment pas du tout, moi. <rire> bon, D'abord, euh, ce qu'ils mangent ne me donne pas vraiment envie, et nous, on a l'habitude de bien manger en Alsace. <rire> et puis, il y a quand même beaucoup de, euh, beaucoup de risques. Et, euh, moi, moi je, je me posais cette question... Euh, comment avez-vous surmonté vos peurs et, et je pense que ça peut être un bon conseil euh, aux jeunes qui sont ici. Comment on surmonte ces peurs euh, quand on décide d'être astronaute Bon, c'était mon rêve. Et euh, moi, je dis toujours, si on a des rêves, il faut... Bon, si, qui n'a pas de rêve ne pas, peut pas réussir à euh, arriver à la fin de ses rêves. Et donc, c'était vraiment import, important aussi d'être euh, un peu courageux mais de le faire avec un système. Donc, euh, pour arriver, pour être astronaute, il faut avoir une, belle, euh, une bonne éducation, une bonne formation. Et euh, il faut parler des langues. Et il faut aussi passer à travers un concours. Mais la question, c'était la peur. Et euh, donc, c'était l'entraînement. On a vraiment beaucoup, beaucoup des instructeurs. Sont, la moitié sont des filles, l'autre la, moitié sont des garçons ou des jeunes hommes, je dois dire, des jeunes femmes. Et euh, eux, ils expliquent tellement bien chaque pas. Et donc, euh, on apprend et on a confiance. Et moi, j'ai aussi vu mes collègues qui étaient dans l'espace, Thomas Pesquet, par exemple. Euh, lui, il a volé six mois avant moi, donc moi, j'étais son backup. 
Et euh, on n'a pas les souvent. Et moi, je dis, euh, bon, j'ai demandé les mêmes questions que vous me, me demandez maintenant. Et euh, bon, lui m'a expliqué, il ne faut pas avoir peur, c'est tout normal et tout ça. Et à la fin, euh, oui, on, on a la confiance. Now we have a time for one last question. I would, I would like to go up to the... <laughs> Please be, be quiet a little bit. <laughs> we, I would like to ask your students up there, your French students in the tribunes, please. There we have a little girl who's raising the hand. Perhaps we can try to hear you, but you must be quiet because she, don't have, she doesn't have a microphone. So pshht. And so, yes, you please. Can you stand up? and tell us your question and be loud. <laughs> ah, combien d'entraînement il faut avoir pour aller dans l'espace, c'est ça Oui, je pense que c'est ça. Ouais. Oui, Pardon. donc l'entraînement pour un astronaute, ça se fait dans des différentes étapes. Maintenant, on a une nouvelle classe des astronautes et il y a aussi une jeune, euh, jeune française, Sophie Adenau, qui est maintenant à Cologne pour s'entraîner, parce que Cologne, c'est le seul lieu en Europe où les astronautes sont formés. Et euh, cette première phase, c'est un an. On appelle ça « basic training ». Et après, après, on peut être envoyé directement pour une mission, et ça dépend de la durée et de la difficulté de la mission. Donc euh, maintenant, presque toutes les missions sont de six mois, et pour les six mois, il faut s'entraîner environ deux ans. Donc, avec un entraînement de 300, on est bien formé pour aller dans l'espace. Thank you very much for <laughs> your explanations. Thank you very much for all your questions. We have to continue with our program, so we see that there are a lot of questions left. I just want to have a, just, a, just a little chat with our mayor of the city of Strasbourg, Jeanne Barcillon. You have heard what um, Matthias Maurer told us. Do you find it inspiring? Do you have a message perhaps for all our students here in the hemicycle? Yes, uh, I found it very inspiring and you, you said it at the beginning, you said when you are in the space and you see the little blue planet, you understand we have to take care of it. And I think it's a very, very strong message. And um, perhaps because I, I will have to, to, to leave you, but I have one more question for uh, Matthias. Um, about women in, in space. Uh, is it like in, uh, in the political career? Or, or, or are there many, uh, many women uh, astronauts? Well, let me say like women and men do an equal job in space. And uh, so there is, there is no reason why there should be only male astronauts or only female astronauts. The best team is a 50% mixed team, I believe. And I had, uh, I had the pleasure of having uh, female colleagues up there with me, and that was wonderful. Um, we have so far not yet 50% female astronauts in the European Astronaut Corps, but in the last election, we roughly selected 50% or 40% women and 60% and uh, male astronauts. And there is no difference. Like, if the girls here are dreaming to become astronaut, you can do it. It's, <laughs> it's easy, I tell you. Great. <laughs> So, thank you very much, Matthias, for having let us travel one hour in space with you, for sharing your stories. Merci beaucoup aussi à Monsieur le Président Frédéric Guéry, à Madame la Maire Jeanne Barseguian de Strasbourg. Thank you very much to your questions. We continue now, but first of all, I would like to show you a little video of the European Space Agency that inspires you if you would like to work as an astronaut, perhaps this gives you some impressions, some ideas. So let's have a look at this video.
So thank you very much for this applause. Thank you very much for this enriching discussions with Matthias Maura, Frédéric Bierry, and Jeanne Barseguian. It was great to see how interested you are, how inspired, and how motivated. C'était vraiment chouette de vous voir tellement inspiré. Il y avait des questions, mais je ne sais pas combien. Il y avait des centaines de questions. On n'avait pas le temps de répondre à toutes les questions, mais déjà à une multitude, ce qui était vraiment chouette. Et voilà, après ce riche échange, euh, on atterrit de nouveau maintenant sur, euh, sur Terre et on va s'intéresser à vos souhaits et vos voeux. Mais avant qu'on va faire ça, on va laisser le temps à l'Orchestre Philharmonique de Strasbourg d'accorder les instruments. We give some time to the orchestra, the Philharmonic Orchestra of Strasbourg, who is back now here in the hemicycle to tune the instruments. So um, we give them 30 seconds, one minute, so go for it and then we continue. <laughs> are going to discuss your wishes and your ideas for the future of the European of the European Union sorry and the parliament also so we ask you before this event to write down your most important wishes for the future of the union of the European Union and i would like to discuss your wishes with Daniela Zenk she is joining us now here on the presidency and we are going to see your wishes with her together. Daniela Zenk is the head of the conference unit here in Strasbourg, and so, and so she really wanted to come here with us to discuss your wishes. So an applause for Daniela Zenk. Um, mm -hmm. So hello, Daniela. Thank you very much for joining us here this morning. Perhaps you can tell us in one sentence what are you doing, what are your responsibilities here? So thank you very much to get this opportunity to speak to everybody and thank you Julia for bringing me to the place because I am working here in Strasbourg in the European Parliament and we organize events and it is so nice that once we can also take part in an event which we usually organize. So I would like to thank everybody to make this event possible, La Collectivité d'Alsace, La Ville de Strasbourg, uh, and the region of Grand Est. Um, but also I would like to thank all the men and women, the women and men I should be saying, behind the scenes, the technicians, the ushers who are doing such a great uh, job, of course, and you and everybody to make it possible. And of course you children, because you do you are so amazingly and such a future of Europe. It's nice. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, an applause for Daniela Zeng. And now, let's have a look at your wishes. On va regarder vos vœux. Wir gucken, schauen jetzt mal eure Wünsche für die Zukunft der Europäischen Union an. Wir müssen sie gleich hier oben auf dem Bildschirm sehen. And there we see them, we are going to see your wishes. We, young Europeans, together in Strasbourg for the 70th anniversary of the Parliament, share a woe for Europe. And now we have three different woes. So would you like to read the first one, Daniela? Yes, uh, the first one is more European youth exchange. Then we have a more united and peaceful union. And the last one is more commitment to the environment. So three different kind of woes three different kinds and of important votes. What do you think of them, Daniela? They are very important and my task today is to be like a post because I will bring them back to the President of the European Parliament. This is why I'm here. So all three are wishes which are important, but it's interesting to see which is the most important one. Would it be possible to be a little bit more quiet so we can hear us better? That would be great because now it's up to you. You are going to vote for the most important vote. Maintenant, c'est à vous de voter. Vous allez voter pour 
la, le Wort plus, le plus important, pour le souhait le plus important, ihr werdet jetzt wählen für euren Wunsch, den ihr am wichtigsten haltet für die Europäische Union. So now choose green for the first one, white for the second one and red for the last one. Grün für den ersten, weiß für den zweiten, rot für den dritten, le vert pour le premier, le blanc pour le deuxième, le rouge pour le troisième. Voilà, the vote is open. <laughs> A lot of discussing, chatting. Which is the most important wish for you? Make your choice, please. Il faut choisir, faites votre choix. Stimmt ab für euren wichtigsten Wunsch. Was haltet ihr am wichtigsten für die Zukunft der Europäischen Union? And now the vote is closed. Stop voting, please. Il faut arrêter de voter. On le voit. We had 648 participants, 648 participants, 116 have voted for the green wish, the first one, 193 for the second one, the red one, and 339 for the last one. So the last one was more commitment to the environment, if I am correct. So The most of the students think that environment is the most important, more commitment for the environment is the most important wish. Beaucoup plus d'engagement pour l'environnement, c'est votre souhait le plus important pour l'avenir de l'Europe, de l'Union Européenne. Mehr engagement für die Umwelt, das ist euer Wunsch für Europa. And now I kindly invite the girl, Mira, at C114. <laughs> Uh, Daniela, she will give you. <laughs> Because this, I, I present you now, Mira. Mira, could you please tell us where do you come from, perhaps with your microphone? Yeah. Uh, should I speak in English or French? Uh, you can speak French also if you would like. Uh, to. Je viens de France. Ouais. Et uh, du coup, je fais partie de uh, l'Opéra National du Rhin. Et tu, toi, tu as aussi voté pour euh, l'environnement C'était euh, aussi non, ton moi, souhait Non, moi j'ai voté pour la première. Pour la première. Et qu'est-ce que tu en penses maintenant du souhait qui a été voté ben, En vrai, je suis un peu d'accord quand même avec la troisième proposition. Ouais. Face à la crise climatique, face à l'urgence climatique, c'est vrai que c'est très important. Donc toi, tu as le vœu, you have the, the, the wish in your hand, so you can give it now to Daniela, and Daniela tells us what she's doing with it. Merci beaucoup. Et félicitations pour ta présentation ici. Ce n'est pas facile de parler devant tout ce monde. Hein. Je vais faire mon travail de post-man, post-woman. Je vais l'amener chez la présidente. Je pense qu'elle va être très intéressée de savoir qu'est-ce que c'est la priorité pour les jeunes de votre âge. Merci beaucoup pour tout ça. Merci beaucoup. Oui. Et au nom de la présidente, je me permets de remercier le président Pierry, la maire de Strasbourg, Mme Barseillon, et Herr Maurer. C'est très inspirant. Merci beaucoup d'être chez nous au Parlement européen. Et merci beaucoup, Daniela, d'être venue. Et voilà, merci de récupérer le souhait, the wish of our students here. Merci beaucoup, you very much, merci. Daniela. So, was für eine tolle Idee und Runde, was für eine tolle Wünscherunde. C'était vraiment uh, très chouette de voir, uh, d'écouter vos Ideen pour uh, l'avenir de l'Union Européenne. It was very great to see your wishes for the future of the European Union. So, more commitment for the environment. A great wish. And now it's time for some music. I know that you have practiced a lot yesterday here in the Zenit in Strasbourg. You've practiced and now we would like to hear your voices. We would like to hear you singing. Uh, oui, en, en fait, on aimerait bien vous écouter, vous entendre maintenant. Je sais que vous avez pratiqué hier toute la journée au Zénith. Donc maintenant, il est temps d'entendre de, vos chansons, vos voix et bien sûr l'Orchestre Philharmonique de Strasbourg. Before we start, I would like to introduce you the first piece that we are going to hear now, which is from Mozart. It is called Canon and regroups the 24 different languages of the European Union. We have chosen Canon from Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart because of its symbolic character. It points out that even if we speak 24 different languages, we are united in music. Nous sommes unis 
dans la musique, même si on parle 24 différentes langues, wir sind in der Musik geeint, selbst wenn wir 24 verschiedene Sprachen sprechen. So now it's up to you, we are going to hear Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart kennen. So now we continue. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart est décédé le 5 décembre 1791 et sa musique résonne jusqu'à aujourd'hui. Nous aimerions maintenant vous faire voyager vers le futur avec l'œuvre Le Colibri du compositeur contemporain argentin Gerardo Di Gusto, une, une œuvre qui aborde la thématique envi environnementale et c'est un sujet d'actualité, comme on vient de le voir avec votre vœu, plus d'engagement pour l'environnement et avec la crise climatique qui demande au monde entier de travailler ensemble en urgence et pour faire face à cette crise, il faut agir ensemble, devenir un collectif, un groupe de Colibri pour aller vers le futur. So I repeat it in English. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart died on the 5th of December 1791 and his music resonates until this day. Now we would like to take you on a journey to the future avec the piece, uh, with the piece towards the future, vers le futur, from the work The Hummingbird, the Colibri by the contemporary Argentine composer Gerardi Di Gusto. 
a work that deals with the environmental, environmental theme. It is a current topic because of climate urgency and as we saw already with your wishes. So we have to act together in urgency, become a collective, a group of hummingbirds of Colibri to go vers le futur towards the future. our music 
Michael travel with Mozart's canon in 24 languages. And now we will hear a language that doesn't even exist. We will hear an imaginary language that no one of us here in the hemicycle uses and speaks, but that will unite us by singing it together. It is the masterpiece Adiemus from Gaelic composer and musician Carl Jenkins. So that was 
Just Wonderful, City Magnifique, das war ganz wunderbar, eure Stimmen hier zu hören. Last but not least, the moment has come, we will sing together an excerpt from the anthem of the European Union, The Ode to Joy. You all know it, I think. The text comes from the German author Friedrich Schiller, and the wonderful composition comes from the German composer Ludwig van Beethoven, who composed it as he was deaf already. It is a magical composition that reunites all the 27 member states of the European Union. So let's hear and sing the Ode to Joy together.
<laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> the wonderful sounds of the orchestra, the Philharmonic Orchestra of the city of Strasbourg. Thank you very much for your great voices, your great singings. I think we are all, we are all okay that we had goosebumps from the head to the feet. It was just wonderful and unforgettable moment. C'était juste un moment inoubliable, magique. C'était vraiment magnifique grâce à l'Orchestre Philharmonique de Strasbourg et grâce à vous et vos chants. C'était vraiment très, très beau. Vielen Dank für dieses wunderbare Konzert. Danke an das wunderbare Philharmonische Orchester der Stadt Strasbourg. Vielen Dank an euch, an eure wunderbaren Stimmen. Voilà, c'est ainsi que s'achève cet événement. Ja, damit geht dieses Event zu Ende. This marks, the, this marks, this points the uh, end of this event and of this wonderful afternoon and this wonderful week that you've spent here together in Strasbourg. So first of all, I would like to thank you, dear students, the French students up there, that you were so nice hosts to other European students that came here to Strasbourg. Thank you very much. This applause is yours. <laughs> And thank you very much. Thank, I would like to thank. <laughs> I also want to thank the students that come from all the 27 member states. They, they, you came from far away. We heard it from Lithuania, from Slovenia. You came from all the different member states. So it was really, really great to have you here. You had a long journey sometimes. So great to have you here. And very, it was very nice that you've spent the week here together with your French colleagues up there. And now I also would like to thank our dedicated guests this afternoon. I would like to thank Fabienne Keller, who joined us from um, Paris. I also want to thank Madame Laurence, la ministre Ma Laurence Boone. I would like to thank l'eurodéputée Madame Anne Sander. Monsieur le Président Frédéric Bierry de la Collectivité Européenne d'Alsace, Madame la Maire Jeanne Barseguian. And I would also uh, thank Mathias Mauer, our astronaut who came here. You answered. <laughs> <laughs> who answered all of your questions and he shared his stories with us. That was very a nice and great moment, unforgettable. And I would like to thank the European Parliament and the conference unit, Ms. Daniela Zenk, to having helping us to, to organize this event. And a big thank you to Olivier Mero, who is the director, the cultural director and the director of the heritage here from the Collectivité Européenne d'Alsace, who helped organizing this event. A big thanks to him also. And we ha don't have to forget our technical team behind the scenes. We have directors, sound engineers, camera operators, and a lot more. <laughs> And 
a lot more stuff behind the scenes. So big thanks to all of them. And I just want to say you, make your voice heard, stay engaged, be curious, be interested in Europe as you have been in this week. And I wish you now a wonderful afternoon. I say goodbye, arrivederci. Auf Wiedersehen, <laughs> au revoir, et merci d'être venu. Vive l'Europe! <laughs>